Ah, welcome, welcome, welcome to Chopping It Up, brothers and sisters. Wanted to show some love for one of my most beloved grandsisters, as our Baba Kamal Cambone called him uh, last week when we did our program. We wanted to just start today's program off with uh, a tribute to our grandsister. That's a new term given to us by Baba Kamal Cambone. Nat Turner was born uh, October 2nd, 1800, and commenced his great work on August 21st, 1831, uh, for the liberation of African people. This is his Earth Day, the day he was put on this planet, and we just pay so much honor and homage to our grandsister Nat Turner. Let's thank him. Let's give him a, a, a black hand for the great work of liberation of African people, freeing our children, our women, our men, and our families from bondage, the great work, and we love you forever, and we wish to uh, make you smile in the deeds and work that we do in the interest of our own people. Got a phenomenal program today. Don't want to, uh, uh, don't want you to miss out. Let me tell you, I got a, a question from uh, 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 um, a brother or sister online. I'm not able to see the name, so I don't want to mistake it, but um, they were asking, you know, they saw the video about what's happening in Europe but what's going on in America and how can they find out? Well, today you're going to find out what's going on all around the world, particularly America. But we're not just going to stop with black people in America. Let me tell you what's very important for this program. I can tell you, you know, now if you don't have uh, the capacity, which pretty much you should be able to, because if you have it on your phone, you can, you can watch this on your phone or uh, at home on your computer, either way. Today you want to go to elifemedia.net. Again, elife. E L I F E media dot net, not dot com. Why do I tell you that you want to go there? Very, very imperative. The things I'm going to show you today are going to really blow you away. And you're going to hear them. So if you're listening on Facebook Live, that's fine. But you'll be looking at me the whole time and be disturbed by what you're hearing. But if you really want to get the full effect, you really got to see some of the stuff for yourself. So I don't want to do too much. Uh, too long introductions today because we got some real serious stuff to go into. This is going to be a program to remember. This is serious business. We are facing some serious business. I'm going to tell you how it happened. But before I do, again, go to elifemedia.net. Please, brothers and sisters, elifemedia.net. Because the difference between being there where you are now, you're going to be able to see a lot of things that I'm showing. So let me go get this uh, introduction stuff out of the way and let's get into this discussion. I want to remind everybody. October 14th, Saturday, October 14th, 2017, I'm going to be back in Brooklyn. That's right, I'm going to be up there with them Brooklyn bad boys and bad girls up there pounding the pavement in the streets of New York City, the, the, the Big Apple at the Restoration Plaza, uh, 1368 Fulton Street. Uh, doors open at 3 p.m., so you want to be there. Again, Saturday, October the 14th, 2017, we're going to drop some bombs. What are we talking about? We're looking at Trump, we saw this whole thing that just happened in Las Vegas. We see in the hurricanes and all this stuff. Uh, we see in the direction that this world is going. And the question is, what do we do now? And so we're going to answer that question. We're going to start talking about what is necessary for black people to start doing. Uh, phenomenal. Also want to say, just mention, uh, there was a, the Ultimate Man series that was done in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Our sister Latanya, she did a phenomenal job in putting the program together. I'm going to tell you all more about that uh, in weeks to come. It's going to be something that you want to participate in, brothers and sisters. It, it's, it's magnificent what's being done on the ground. So many great people doing great work. And I met some incredibly impressive people. And y'all know this irritated genius Southeast. I don't get impressed too easily. want to remind everybody, two to four every week, we have the Chopping It Up uh, here on the radio. Today we're going to be talking about the, 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 the transgender curriculum and this homophile assault on children, not only in America, but all around the world. So you've got to be tuned into this. I uh, also want to remind you at 6 p.m. tonight, it probably doesn't sound that interesting, but it's going to be very interesting. We're going to talk about the third eye tonight, 6 p.m. Every, uh, uh, every um, Monday uh, after we do this program, you get a two-hour break, come back in around 6, 6.15. We start up fresh, 6.15. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the third eye and being able to see and have real sight discernment. How to you can see everybody seeing the same stuff with their physical eye and hearing the same stuff. How do we discern what's actually correct? It's something that we haven't learned or we're not being taught, and it's very important because ten people get the same information and come to different conclusions. That means either they're not understanding the information the same, it's not being presented the right way, or there's a lot of lack of discernment to know what it really means and what you're supposed to do with it. So 
Again, if you're tuning in now, you want to tune into elifemedia.net. Please, elifemedia.net, because you're going to be able to see the stuff that I'm about to play in a few minutes, and it's going to blow you out the water. Uh, One Horizon Media, we have, you know, Irritated Genie. You can come down here to Everlasting Life, um, 9185 Central Avenue, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. And the first Saturday of every month when we have the vendors here, it's a, a Black Wall Street extravaganza with a lot of black-owned products. You want to do that first of every first weekend of every month. Uh, you can also get Malik Fashion. She's here from Tuesday through Friday and the first Saturday of every month as well with the best fashions in the business, the Black Wall Street uh, Renaissance. That's every first Saturday. You want to come on out 12 to 6. A lot of black vendors here. Also want to remind you, come out here and get this food for your life. It's called Everlasting Life, and the food is made for you to live, brothers and sisters. Uh, also, eLife Media Studios. You can come out and get your own program so that you can get your word across to the world just like we're doing here. Well, maybe not just like. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you you're going to get an irritated genie chopping it up program, but hey, you're going to get a program nevertheless that you're going to enjoy and it's going to be able to get the word out to our people. Come on down, check it out, and figure out how you can get online with that. want to remind people about our street black gardening. We're going to start ramping back up in the spring around the country. We're going to be doing it hard in Atlanta, here in the D.C. Washington metropolitan area. And we're also going to be doing it in, uh, uh, we're going to try to be doing it in New York and also in Boston, where we can get people growing their own food in their own yards and gardens. We've done it, and we're going to continue to do it. So we want to remind people that also the Warner Horizon Gun Club, we haven't gotten a person to run it yet. Uh, that's been on me. I've been doing some things, so forgive me. I'm going, we're going to do it. There's no two ways about it. we just run running way behind schedule. We're supposed to start in September. That didn't happen, but we're going to start. So don't worry about that. You got to be patient with me, but we're going to get it done. And with that said, brothers and sisters, please tune in to elifemedia.net. Now, some of this stuff, I'm going to understand if you want to stay on Facebook Live, uh, because some of the stuff I'm going to show you is just, is just mind-bending. But we've been talking about this homophile assault against African people, and now it's better for me to show you. Uh, we have, back in 2006, when I did Feminization of the Black Male Part 3, the militant white sex assault on children. That militant white sex assault on children was to show people that there's no two ways about it. Homosexuality and pedophilia are two ends of the same coin. Homophilia, that's what we call it. And if you're defending homosexuality on any level, you're defending pedophilia, whether you know it or not. And if you're defending pedophilia on any level, you're insane, but you're defending homosexuality. Both of them are equally insane because both of them are part of the same um, rubric of psychopathology. Now, of course, if, I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, two women out here messing with each other the same as one of them molesting a child. What I am saying, we got to understand what we're dealing with. We got to get out of this psychopathic sexual madness altogether, and I'm going to show you. Let me tell you how this discussion came to be, then I'm going to just start showing you videos, okay? Then, then you're going to have a chance to call in and give your opinion uh, and talk before the program is over. So how did this happen? Last week, and you know, things like this happen all the time when you don't know what program you're going to want to do. And we didn't have a program for this week scheduled. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And a sister came in, and it actually started pretty contentious because I was talking to a brother and I was saying how uh, some of the sisters in, 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 in Africa, because they're watching Empire and things like that, are beginning to give the men problems. And she didn't hear it correctly. She, you know, she heard whatever she wanted to hear. And she was thinking, I was saying, all black women, are, you can't get along with them. So she said, well, not all black women. She started getting real contentious. And I said, but I said again, you know me, I'm irritated, Gina, can't do it the nice way. I said, like I said, the women in Uganda, according to the brothers I spoke to, are saying this is a problem that they're facing. And so she starts saying, and I said, they're watching Empire. She said, yeah, that filth and da-da-da. So anyway, now we start having a good dialogue. And it was me and the brother I was talking to and her, and now we're all having a good dialogue. And she said, young man, I've been teaching for 35 years. Do you know what they're doing in the school curriculum? I said, what are they doing? She said, the teachers take the transgender and homo literature and Xerox it out of the books, hand it to the children, read it to them and teach the lesson, and then take the stuff back up and don't send the children home with the books or the Xerox stuff. She said, that way the parents don't know what their children are being indoctrinated with. And if you would have seen us that were standing out there it was like our stomachs dropped, our, our hearts dropped into our stomach. It was like, because I knew that they were doing it, because I, I got the videos to show you. What I didn't know is how insidious it is. So it's very calculated. 
They know that some of this crazy insanity that they're giving children, that if they let the parents see it, parents will go nuts and bonkers. They know this. They're fully aware of it. So what they do to ensure that parents don't know is that they give it to the children and teach it and don't send the children home with any evidence of it. And if you're talking about a four or five year old who just been taught that two guys can be together, two girls can be together, they don't know how to articulate that when they get home. They read the book, they liked the book, they went to the next thing, they don't even remember it half the time. They just say, hey, we had fun, we did this. And they have to, you know, they, they don't have the cognitive capacity to know what's happening to them in the classroom. That's how they're doing it. She told me, I've been there 35 years, she said what they're doing is insane. I talked to another brother who I know very well who says that they're being mandated. Every teacher in Washington, D.C., every teacher must attend the transsexual, uh, transsexuality for children. I'm talking about children as, as young as five years old. You must attend this workshop to know how to deal with transsexual elementary school students. If you don't, you're going to lose your job. I hope you're listening to what I'm saying. Not like you got to take it another day. You must attend. It's mandatory. You lose your job if you don't attend. Are y'all listening to me? So they're actually teaching this and putting this in to the curriculum to enforce. It ain't even an option now, even when you don't want that to happen, in an underpinning way to put this madness on our children. Now what I'm going to do with that as the backdrop for you to understand why we're doing this, if you're watching now, I see people are tuning in, please go to elifemedia.net because it's one thing for you to hear this. It's another thing for you to see it for yourself. I'm going to start with what's going on in Europe just to understand what they're doing to white children. And not all the whites are happy with this. They just don't know what to do. I'm not defending the whites. I'm just saying these hats are out of control. What they're doing to children on this planet is unthinkable. You want to see this to understand what they're doing to our children here. And you, I'm going to show you what they're doing to our children here elifemedia.net. Let's go with this right now. This is what they're doing in Europe. If you're tuning in now, go to elifemedia.net so you can see this. If you consider this revolting and perverted, Understand that you will be seen as an intolerant, shallow person who should visit a psychiatrist. This is a usual playground slide. You don't believe it? Take a closer look. A boy of five is sliding down right there. For this playground slide see, is in Norway. It's a penis. And it was put there in order to bring out children in a proper way. Slide down not the to slide feel shy, come out but to be developed. The end of the penis. Are you shocked? Well, if so, it means that you are backward and not able to appreciate how modern civilization has evolved. Not long ago, Europeans decided to civilize their citizens from the cradle in order to reduce the number of such stupid people. elifemedia.net The youngest children are taught core values through the examples of toy animals. This French book has the title Little Fox Jean Has Two Mums. And here is a story about a baby penguin entitled The Tango of Two Fathers. Why not? Preschool teachers in kindergartens read such books to children. Teachers use special methods and techniques which are being worked out in ministries. For example, the Danish Ministry of Equality has printed a guideline for nursery teachers called Kindergartens, where there is a place for peppy princes and pirate princesses. In Latvia, you can find books for boys entitled The Day When Carlis Was Carleen, and for girls, The Day When Ruta Was Richard, published under the patronage of the ministry. Eli and you encounter the same situation in Germany. For instance, the pupils of one German school swapped sexes. In honor of Gender Equality Day, boys and girls cross-dressed. In fact, everybody took part, both teachers and students, because, according to Europeans, it helps to reach mutual understanding. 
Schüler sich in der Schule, wo sie sehr lange in ihrer Jugend sind, nicht verstellen müssen, sondern sein können, wer sie sind. If you're shocked by all this, that handicraft and PE teachers can come to school in a skirt with makeup and high heels, and a maths teacher can come to school wearing men's trousers and false beard, then it means you are backward. LGBT ideologists are sure that a man in his infancy is neuter. That's why he can later choose who he wants to be. He, she, or it. You can see this at Eli's Media. These boxes are not sold in sex shops, but are given out in kindergartens in Basel, Switzerland. Plastic boxes are made for children of four years and upward. A complete set is made up of queer dolls, special illustrated books, and toys imitating genitals. But that's not the worst. The most horrible thing is that nowadays kids are transformed and become some kind of neuter. A creature that doesn't know who it is, male or female. Please tag people in this and tell them to go to elifemedia.net so they can this see This is Max. It. He is two. His English father and mother dress him in boys' trousers as a boy and girls' skirts. Though Max was born as a normal boy, his parents consider this meaningless. Until the boy decides for himself who he is, his parents make him play with both toy cars and dolls. His mother paints his nails and pins up his hair with girlish hairpins. And his father shows him how to assemble a robot. According to his parents, they do it for the sake of their child. According to Lisa, Max's 23-year-old mother, a gender-neutral upbringing gives a child the freedom to choose between stereotypical male and female clothes and toys. He gets dressed and plays with toys the way he likes. From an early age, Max, who is brought up as God knows who, and his parents and hundreds of thousands of European families, have fallen victim to a modern gender theory, which turns people into neutered creatures. The formation of such people of the future begins in special kindergartens. Here is one such preschool institution in Sweden. The kindergarten Egalia has been operating since 2010 in Stockholm. Here the children are treated as if they have no gender. Instead of han or hon, which is translated from Swedish as he or she, a child is called hen, which means it. This neuter word was added by pedagogues to their word armory from non-traditional sexual minorities. That's probably the reason why the director of the kindergarten, Lotta Rajalin, considers this procedure to be the most democratic. So I think we are go going to change girls to boys and boys to girls, and that's of course not what we are doing. We like to give every human being the same rights, the same possibilities, the same responsibilities. And that is a question of democracy. Here is how this democracy works. Kids play with neuter dolls and read books about a boy who loved pink and a dress with white polka dots. Boys must play in a doll kitchen with girls and girls must build cities with Lego construction blocks. And this is also the situation in France where bureaucrats from the Department of Education came to one of the kindergartens. They were shown an open lesson where kindergarten teachers help children to overcome stereotypes. The figures of boys and girls are attached to a blackboard. The children's task is to dress the figures so that they portray neither male nor female. Films about these new children are brought to the attention of teenagers at the age of 12 to 14. For example, this movie called Tomboy. This term signifies a girl who acts like a boy. And it tells the story of 10-year-old Laura, who understood that she's a boy. In addition, this girl falls in love with her female neighbor. This boy-girl story was lauded by critics, and it won the Berlinale 2011 prize. It's difficult to believe that this outrageous film about a girl who likes to be a boy is shown to pupils in France. Within the framework of the program, 
school and cinema, it was seen by 46,000 French pupils. And German teenagers at the age of 13 are given odd questionnaires where they must think, do they belong to the right gender? Here are several questions. When and why did you decide to be heterosexual? Is heterosexuality only a phase which you'll overcome? Is it possible that your heterosexuality is the result of the neurotic fear of the people the same gender as you? You must admit that such questions are difficult to make out by adults, say nothing of seventh graders. They try to make neuters of modern children who fall victim to a doctrine accepted in 1995. This was when the transformation of a person into a mysterious it began. In Beijing, during the UN World Conference, the notion sex was changed to gender out of respect for people of non-traditional orientation. At the time, it seemed nothing special, but many psychologists and sociologists think it could lead to the fall of human civilization. Please watch at elifemedia.net so you can see what we're doing here, bro. It's it's against nature. The concept of gender mainstreaming, it's, it's an ideology, it's not a science, also you can, you, you can st behavior. Well, he was accused of pedophilia's, will likely be. All right, now, I showed that, so I hope everybody out there is tuned in to elifemedia.net. Uh, for those of you that's just joining now, tune in to elifemedia.net so you can see this, because you've got to be able to see this to really get the gravity and weight of what we're looking at now. Um, so now you see here, this is 2017, a new law in Canada. Essentially what the law does is basically says, if your son says, I want to be a girl, and you say, no, boy, you're a boy, you can have your children taken away from you from what is equivalent to child protective custody here, CPS, what is their equivalency in Canada, which means they're doing the same thing here in the United States. United States, Canada, Europe are all following the same pattern because, again, we're talking about the white so-called Jews that are running all of this. Uh, we call them small hats that are really driving all of this. You can get the Pizzagate lecture for those that you all haven't seen it. If you really want a detailed uh, uh, diagram of exactly the process that's being used to make this happen. Now, I want to go forward past this because now we're going to, you remember when I did the Pizzagate lecture, I had, I had stopped doing the lecture and I said, I'm done with this. And then I started coming back uh, some months later and I did the Pizzagate. He said, I thought you was done. And I said, there was a sister that told me she went to Jamaica and they were killing the women and taking the organs. And this stuff, you should get back and found us out. And we were trying to stop it from happening. So once I looked into it and saw all the pieces and realized it was connected with the child sex trafficking and the organ trafficking, all of this one thing, I had to come out and do the pizza gate. Well, the same sister here, I want you to see what happened in Canada. Remember, it's very important to hear this part because we're talking about our people, black people, but we got to understand what's happening internationally for us to get uh, the gravity of this. These people sent their children to an African-centered school. I want you to hear what I'm saying. They took their money and said, I don't want my child not to know their culture. I want my child to go to an African-centered school. In a million years, and you saw what they're doing in Canada, right? So you see that they're pushing this, this, this transgender, homosexuality, homophilia among children. Nobody at that school as parents would have thought in a million years that they would have drawn a transsexual into the classroom and start teaching the children as a transsexual uh, teaching the children about this behavior. Fortunately, she educates her child on this homophile assault. So he had the words to be able to say, this is what happened, mommy. And when she went and investigated and found out they were doing this and not telling the parents what they were doing in a so-called African center school, she said, we have to take action. So I want y'all to see this video because this is very important to understand. There are people who are standing up and telling us what they're doing to our children, but not enough people are getting the information to know that. Thanks to all viewers. My name is Linda Baker. I am a newer parent of the Afrocentric Alternative School, and I'm currently in the position of parent rep and also part of the fundraising committee. Um, I think Mama Yulissa summed up everything so nicely that I'm actually at a loss for words, um, but just want to add that I think it's important for us as parents to be involved. It's very, very, very important. It's very critical. Um, 
And so this is why I'm here. I want to be in the know. Um, I want to be a part of change. I want to be a part of solutions. And, you know, so we come out and we get engaged and we follow up and, you know, we act. Um, so, yeah, I'm just here to see progress. Um, I'm here to see our youths productly, sorry, productively grow in a safe space for Nubian children. Um, I think it is very important. Our situation at large is very sensitive. And, um, you know, it's... Look at this. It's the All awareness for of the it. Rainbow. I think a lot of times we, this we run into in African centered school. a lot of us still come from Princess Boy thinking. And so... You know, diversity is important because we still Stay have a need wheat. to worry them around. Tango and tango, two gay yeah, pingers. You know? Yeah, but we keep the direction and, and keep the thing. Uh, uh, the upside street, down you know? triangle, um, rainbow. At a so African centered school. It's deep and it's heavy. So cool. Our day I fight the good fight, as the mother say. Heather has and, two mommies. Um, she had touched on the brothers. Uh, 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 Are you a looking big at this? Issue, mother, I think sisters. is the fact that there's a lot of estrogen. Um, permeated in the air and because the of that African it can cause a lot of school. conflicts because we know we lack balance Pushing this so we perversion. need our brothers to come out we're calling out to the community at large brothers big brother we need you know yeah you're welcome you're needed you know um, again it's important for us as an African people to strike a balance because you know we're all about the balance so you know We'll continue to be here. We'll continue to fight. We'll continue to love. We'll continue to support. The sisters are saying we yeah, need we'll you men to help us fight this. Ashe spoke already. I appreciate everything they had to say. As uh, my, I always love to hear our elders speak on the issues that are very important. As Yolisa is an elder to both of us here. In regards to the issues that are pressing right now in the community, I see very well that there is some serious challenges as it regards to what is African-centered. That's What right. does being African-centered mean? Talk about it, sister. Is homosexuality a part of our culture? No. And we know it's not. We know the elders, Baba Mwili Mwili Mbrudi, Baba Amos Wilson. That's right. The Honorable Igungu, Divine Ancestor Francis Crest Welsing. That's right. The Honorable Marimba Ani. The Honorable Jegna, Khalid Mohammed. Teach. All our honorable elders, Dr. Fukial, our current standing ancestors who walk with us everywhere we go. We know that we wouldn't be here if it was not for heterosexual unions. That's right. If it was not for straight black pride, African people would not exist. That's right. So it's very important that we put everything into this true context and actually really understand the role that we play and what it means to be male or female as African people. Why is it that our ancestors died for us? Why, why did they go through the struggles that they went through for us as African people? Why is it that they fought to be together and they fought to love each other through all trials and tribulations? Would we be here standing on this earth if it were not for male and female unions? And we know we would not. And we also have to ask what will our future be if homosexuality becomes a norm That's right. in our societies? I wanted to speak about also that part of the reason why I placed my son in this school was because I am an African nationalist and because being an African nationalist means that I am nation first, I am African first and obviously, you know, as an African diasporan that may mean something different, you know, right? Because I don't have, I don't necessarily have the same experience as, you know, other people, especially being born in Canada. So, I uh, really appreciate the brothers coming out today because the presence is very much needed and I find with the lack of presence of our brothers it creates issues That's right. in uh, ancestral memory. It invokes the memory of us not being protected. Of I want you to understand they were calling on the brothers because because there's a lack of manhood in those regions they were able to push this madness on our children and so you were talking about in a, a school that's called the African Center Charter School is where they're pushing Heather has two mommies. You saw the whole bulletin board they just showed you where they're teaching this homophilia. Um, and everybody that's tuning in, please watch this on elifemedia.net so you can see what we're talking about as well as hear it. elifemedia.net. So we thank those strong sisters up in Canada for taking the time and the opportunity to do that. It was so important that they uh, went out there and, and took that stand because if they didn't, we wouldn't know that this was going on. 
So let me come here. What is this? This is going into the schools, brothers and sisters. The female condom can also be used for anal sex. Squeeze the inner ring. So it's teaching, literally, they're going into elementaries and junior highs. This is an actual document that actually a person I know sent us this, said this is what they gave my child in school today. The female condom can also be used for anal sex. This is either one somebody sent me. I think this is one somebody who this is their actual child holding it that gave it to us, or it's one that somebody told us about and sent us it through email, but it's so hard to remember because there's so much of this stuff happening. Here's something that we got right out of, in, I'm in Prince George's County, Maryland, uh, uh, and somebody in Prince George's County, well, I'm in D.C., but right, right across the street from Prince George's County, right, where, you know, right in the same area in Southeast, and they gave us this, have a super summer, talking about the, the things that the, the, the uh, uh, Department of Parks and Recreation Got the children dressed in the rainbow colors, pushing this stuff, advertising the, hom the homophilia right there with the children. Now we see homophiles adopting children and taking them into their own to have their own little private sex farms. This stuff is rampant, brothers and sisters, and, 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 and because we're uh, uh, in a horrible situation in terms of being able to defend and protect our own children, it's happening so frequently now they're advertising it. I hope everybody's watching this. Again, elifemedia.net. I want to show you how boldly the, the whites now, the homophiles, are advertising having sex with little black children. Watch this. You're not going to believe it. A few weeks ago, it was just me and my wife. And now I'm a dad. Vincent's birth mother, she picked us. And I'm going to do everything right by him. Family means everything. Show him what's underneath. Show him your jockey. Now, I'm going to play that one more time because I want everybody to hear you. You're not, you're not making it. Show them what's under. He's standing there in his underwear talking about show them what's underneath while he's holding a little black baby talking about show them your jockey. Now, we all know this is the actual jockey commercial. Dude, it's not like some random weird company. This is a major company internationally. And listen and look at the imagery of what they're saying. A few weeks ago, it was just me and my wife. And now I'm a dad. Vincent's birth mother, she picked us, and I'm going to do everything right by him. Family means everything. Show him what's underneath. Show him your jockey. Don't try to figure it out, because that's what they want you to say. Well, this can't mean what it looks like it means, because that would mean that they're advertising our children for sex. You don't understand, brothers and sisters. This is, this is not, and I want you to understand, it's not just a... a, a uh, one ad. This is a campaign. They have a show them what's underneath campaign. And here you see him, this, this homophile holding our son naked with his feet right there at, 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 his, at his genitals. I mean, it's a very overt message. It's so overt that while Obama was in office promoting all of this homophile stuff, here you have right there on 15th and G, they're promoting it publicly saying, look, show them what's underneath. Basically saying, we, it's okay now to go after children. Now, I'm, I'm showing this because I want people to understand they're going, it, it, it's no longer hidden. Like when I used to tell people this stuff in the 90s, people thought I was nuts. Now, you can't think I'm nuts because they're publicly doing it. They're not even hiding it. So it's nothing for anybody to say they don't believe. I want you to see what they're doing in Fairfax County, Virginia. This is right across the bridge from Washington, D.C. Again, listen to what they're doing. Again, www.elifemedia.net. You can see this for yourself. Public schools in Fairfax County, Virginia, are preparing to include gender identity in its curriculum for grades 7 through 12. The family life education lessons will include teachings on heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, and transgender identity. Andrea Lafferty of Traditional Values Coalition joins us from our Washington Bureau to talk more about this controversial subject. Andrea, thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you. Thank you. First of all, tell us about this curriculum and the motivation behind it. Well, it's interesting. Um, the school board voted uh, earlier in May to add gender identity. It's not a part of the state law. It's not a part of the uh, state school board instruction, but they've decided to add it against the will of many of the parents. And so now what we're dealing with is a vote on the family life education. Now, while we're talking specifically about Fairfax, I think it's important for people to understand this is happening across the country. So I may talk about Virginia, but listen carefully for your own community. Wow. Well, how will this curriculum impact the students? 
Well, it's very interesting. Right now, what will happen is, starting in kindergarten, they'll talk to them about same-sex or gay marriage. Um, and the, child, the parents will not be able to opt out. The big, one of the big issues is in Virginia, parents can opt their children out of certain parts of the, quote, family life education. And so now what they're doing is they're trying to move parts of it from FLE, family life education, to health, which means the parents cannot opt their children out. And so we've been pouring over the regulations and the information to see exactly what's happening. But we are very, very concerned that they are doing it here in Fairfax County and perhaps other places without the parents' knowledge or consent. In eighth grade, they will be discussing, let me just say, Bill Clinton's activity along with oral and anal. Um, in eighth grade, and most people, and, that, and they've lowered it from ninth grade, or teaching fourth graders about the word incest. How far does that go? What What is the difference between sexual orientation and uh, sexual uh, and gender identity? Well, the difference between sexual orientation and gender identity is sexual orientation is who you have sex with and how you have sex. Gender identity is who you are, male, female, are you born male or female? Are you born nothing? And they want to break down those definitions so you're no longer male or female as God created us. You're one of 52, quote, genders or one of 100 and something genders, depending on who you talk to. It is not clear and it is not a part of our normal cultural discussion. I don't even think it's a part of discussion in France or other European countries. Uh, it, it's just bizarre. And they... Again, they want to force this on the kids in Fairfax County when, in fact, it's not a part of the SOLs or the required education. What's been the reaction from parents, and what can parents do? Well, in Fairfax County, it was interesting because the night of the vote on gender identity, they, the police, they hired a special police force, security. They actually locked 200 parents out so they couldn't get in, um, even though there was standing room in the back. Parents need to be very engaged. Parents need to know what is going on in their local communities. Read anything that's passed. Find out what they're teaching your kids under the guise of health, under the guise of PE or social studies or biology or family life. Um, we're seeing just an onslaught. This thing is snowballing. And so we would just encourage you to protect your children and know what they're being taught. Has the Obama administration played any role in encouraging public schools to adopt this sort of curriculum? Well, that is another very good question. Actually, encourage isn't maybe the word. Um, blackmail or force. Here in Fairfax County, we were told that the Office of Civil Rights um, at Department of Education and Department of Justice would see to it that our federal tax dollars were pulled if, if gender identity wasn't added. What that means is those monies that are meant to help educate and provide for under um, poor children, children that may be going without meals, that funding would be taken. So here we hear all this outcry about Republicans are, you know, not looking out for kids when in fact, when the president and his allies want to push this, this gender identity agenda, they don't care about poor children. Andrea Lafferty, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Now what you see in here is what's happening in the U.S., and this is the part that's really bad about it, is that it's, it's interesting. For one of the first times in history, particularly in this country, as black people, we have to start looking to white folks for moral authority. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that all black people have surrendered. We clearly saw our sisters in Canada fighting back. But reality, here we have to listen to a video from a white female, and, and traditionally, us being so hard in the church, Christian, if we weren't Christian, we were Muslim, we were something, where there were some standards and grandmothers and grandparents and family, we were the moral standards saying they're insane with what they're doing. Where now, our community is becoming so insane, it's only a few of us that are willing to stand up and say, no, this is inappropriate, and we're willing to say it, and we're not afraid. And unfortunately, we have to look to some of the whites to just even vocalize basic sanity sometimes. This is Alex Jones, and he gives, a lot of times he does give some good information. I'm not, I'm not uh, 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 
uh, uh, tell anybody that, you know, that I'm advising you to go tune into them. But I will say there are times, particularly when it deals with this pedophilia agenda, this homophile agenda, particularly the pedophilia aspect, um, he's, more, he's more friendly to the homosexual aspect. Um, maybe he doesn't understand or maybe that's just part of the culture. I don't know. But specifically when it comes to the pedophilia, he gives great information. I'm going to play this clip where he was dealing with the same transgender push on this country, which is, I would say, is probably affecting black children worse than whites. Under the cover of exposing white privilege, they're now teaching in Kentucky under federal grants, we, we have, it's mainstream news, five-year-olds about how to exchange gender fluids, how to, I can't even say this on air, <laughs> I can't, I was reading what they're teaching five-year-olds and I didn't even know about this being a 41-year-old worldly person, I thought, who's been around the block a couple times, maybe a couple hundred times, and I was reading the transcripts of what they teach, and I can't say it on air. In fact, it's not even in the article. You got to link through. You guys pull that up for me. It was in the stack. I said I'd get to it. I mean, it, it, this is a psych warfare attack. White Privilege Conference workshop pushes grade school lessons about gender queer, transgender folks, and exchanging gender fluids. Lecturing elementary school age children, I'm not kidding, it's five-year-olds about gay, lesbian, and transgender issues. Holy Toledo. I'm 41 and I was reading this and, and learning things that five-year-olds are learning. And then if you don't go along with it, you hate gay people. Notice how they just keep pushing, or if you don't accept turning your guns in, you hate black people. Do you understand the left at the top knows that they are not liberals, that they are not freedom pushers? They are tyrants. They have stolen every word out there. They are a menace. And they are social engineers with a plan. In Endgame, uh, 1.5, that was released to PrisonPlanet.tv, an addendum to the film, we have Dr. Kaufman university professor, and he's going over university documents that we show on screen from Columbia, you name it, where they said in 1963, we're gonna break the family up, we're gonna call it a civil rights issue, we're gonna push infertility with chemicals and vaccines and things. We thought I'd find that clip from that film and show that to folks. And we're going to then move past, quote, gay rights to hundreds of different designations, and then we're gonna end sexuality and make it totally asexual where there is no sexuality. And that's the new thing they push for men and women to both look the same, act the same, and basically have no sexuality. What a horrible world they wanna build. What an anti-liberal world. What a group of just horrible anti-humans. They are enemies. Now, I know some of us, you, are you know, you're not an Alex Jones fan, but I'm going to be honest with you. He's right. Everything he just said there is absolutely correct. Now, what I really want you to see here, because, see, this shows intent. And, again, he using words like liberal, and we use these terms. we got to start being, we're not white folks. Let's stop being white folks. They're scared to call the Jews what they are. Let's, we, we call them Jews or small hats. The engineers of this stuff are primarily Jewish. I can give you the names. We you get to Pizzagate, we delineate and show you who they are. It, it, if we're going to stop this and prevent this, we can't be running around scared to call out what's happening because they're engineering the destruction of children right in front of our face. This one is international, particularly focusing on what they're trying to do in Africa. You have to watch this one. Go to, again, uh, elifemedia.net. It's about 10 minutes, but it's 10 minutes worth your time to see how insidious they're trying to destroy our people and what they're doing. Uh, again, if you're tuning in right now, you can, you can, you're just looking at me face to face here, but if you really want to see what's happening, you want to go on to elifemedia.net. Again, elifemedia.net. You've got to watch this because we're seeing what they're doing to our brothers and sisters around the African world. This is definitely an attack. It will affect your child rearing. It will affect your education system. 
This is instructions for the teacher in the classroom to ask her or his students, how do people express their sexual feelings? What is abstinence? And here are some answers. Oral sex, masturbation, anal sex, massage, holding hands, touching each other's genitals, saying, I like you. And what they're doing is equating all these things. Saying, I like you, is equal to anal sex. It is pornography. Men, especially on the house floor, did not want to look at. We couldn't show this on the television news, but yet we want our fourth grade children to be looking at this book. In the name of sexuality education, children are seeing obscene materials that have been ruled by Congress and by the Supreme Court impossible to show to children. An online CSE program for African youth called The World Starts With Me tells children that sexuality includes oral sex and masturbation. It then tells them it's their own choice if they want to lose their virginity. It shows children pictures of naked girls and boys in various stages of development and then asks them to point out differences in their private parts. Parents likely will never know, as it is all done online away from home. They have elementary students as young as nine years old. Then they teach them how to wear a condom. And they have this plastic genitalia, and they even have uh, young girls. They're teaching them how to put a condom on a male genitalia, and boys how to put a condom on a woman genitalia, without the knowledge and consent of the parents. They're giving them handouts, negotiating sexual encounters with other students. For example, there are statements like this. Can I take your shirt off? It makes me hot when you touch me here. Is it okay if I take my pants off? Where we in Latin America, we still have a lot of poverty. We have communities that don't have fresh water, that don't have electricity. Focus is completely shifted from basic needs. They get comprehensive sexual education without the consent of parents, taking and deconstructing also the family. My brother Luigi and I had an opportunity to go to the United Nations and give a speech on the UN floor. I told them how Planned Parenthood was passing out a booklet for HIV positive youth at the United Nations called Healthy, Happy and Hot. This is for the kids who have AIDS. It teaches about sexual pleasure through masturbation with same-sex partners and even if you are drunk. This pamphlet called Healthy, Happy and Hot tells young people that you have the right not to disclose your HIV status to a sexual partner if you're not comfortable. It also tells young people that are HIV positive that if they decide with their partner not to wear a condom, that's their decision. The World Health Organization standards for sexuality education in Europe actually suggest that children ages 0 to 4 should be given information about masturbation and given the right to explore their gender identities. For ages four to six, children should be taught about same-sex relationships and respect for different norms regarding sexuality. The interests of organizations like UNFPA and IPPF is to get parents out of the picture and to radicalize and sexualize children. UNFPA has tried to convince my country to change our positions on issues such as reproductive rights and comprehensive sexuality education. Madam Chair, does the UNFPA think it can do this because Nauru is the smallest member state of the United Nations? The Nigerian government was actually told by the Western countries that if they do not give in, that they will be denied foreign aid. On page 89 of a UNICEF-published Sexual and Reproductive Health Manual, UNICEF listed situations in which one can obtain sexual pleasure that included sexual responses directed towards inanimate objects, animals, minors, and non-consenting persons. In the context of the Sustainable Development Goals that determines the agenda for the next 15 years, the voice is very, very biased. It's just International Planned Parenthood Federation and their affiliates. They have a direct influence on the outcome documents, on what, what is established, what is negotiated at the UN. Some of the objectives of the UNESCO Sexuality Education Guidelines include teaching children at age nine about sexual stimulation and the definition and function of orgasm and at age 15 that both men and women can receive sexual pleasure with a partner of the same or opposite sex. The It's All One curriculum, also promoted by International Planned Parenthood, 
reveals the multiple manipulative tactics used to indoctrinate and sexualize children through CSE. Like other CSE programs, It's All One claims, among other things, to be evidence-based, comprehensive, human rights, gender-sensitive, and culturally appropriate education that will increase young people's responsible decision-making to reduce adolescent rates of pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. It's All One, however, like most CSC programs, is really just cleverly disguised abortion rights, sexual pleasure education, masquerading as human rights, gender, and sexual and reproductive health education. It aggressively promotes abortion with over 112 references to abortion. It's All One has an obsessive focus on sexual pleasure, mentioning sexual pleasure 62 times. It promotes multiple sex acts, and instructs children on how to stimulate themselves or their partner to orgasm. To explore their readiness, children fill out a worksheet that infers children are ready to have sex when you are feeling sexually attracted to the other person, and when you are feeling comfortable about telling the other person what feels good sexually. It teaches that human rights encompass sexual rights, including alleged rights to all persons to sexual expression and the right to seek sexual pleasure. Hooking children on sex is a multi-billion dollar business for Planned Parenthood and other similar organizations. This is because children, or prospects, once sexualized, become Planned Parenthood customers dependent upon their services. Comprehensive sexuality education programs are disguised under many names. They may be called Comprehensive Sex or Sexual Education, Education on Human Sexuality, Reproductive Health Education, information on sexual and reproductive health, family life education, teen pregnancy prevention, rape prevention, anti-bullying programs, HIV AIDS prevention, and sometimes even abstinence or abstinence plus education. CSE programs usually falsely claim to be age-appropriate, evidence-based, healthy sexuality education that will prevent teen pregnancy, sexual abuse, STDs, and HIV. One of the handouts that concerns me the most is called the genderbred person. They teach that gender is a spectrum, that you can choose to be whatever you want. You could be all female one day and the next day feel like you're neither female or male. Frankly, it's confusing. It's mental molestation. We're confusing these kids as to what they are. From a medical perspective, when sexual freedom is the priority, then sexual health is going to suffer. There are laws in Oregon where children as young as 15 can get taxpayer-funded sex changes without parental consent. You can't have an aspirin at school without parental consent. However, a student could make these life-altering, permanent decisions without their parental knowledge or consent. Sexual rights, sexual education movements, began with Dr. Alfred C. Kinsey. Kinsey actually had pedophiles measure with a stopwatch how many children could achieve what he called orgasms within a 24-hour period. Today, comprehensive sexuality education is based on this philosophy that children are sexual from birth, created by Kinsey. Say no to CSC! Say no to CSC! We've got to stop it. We've got to use everything at our disposal. We have to stand together to stop this attack against our children. And they have all this funding and this organization, but we know that if we stand together, we can do something for the family, for the children. We stopped the Kinsey Sexuality Education Program in Croatia. It is time for parents to say, no, my family is mine. My wife is mine. I am hers. Our children are ours. Banded together and find ways to stop it from entering your country. Men have to rise up, defend their family. On matters sexual, the fathers have got to stand up. Say, you have no place talking sexuality to my children. We resist it, even with our lives, because that's what life is all about. It's happening on our watch. If we don't do something about it, it is all of us that carry that guilt. To learn more and to sign the petition to stop comprehensive sexuality education, 
go to stopcse.org. Together, we can and will protect the world's children. Now, that's all I showed in this particular one. They actually have a part where the young sister goes to the UN. And this girl's, I think, 14 or 15, and starts showing the manuals that they were giving them, telling them that they could use, and I'm going from my memory, so don't quote me on it, but basically how they can use feathers to have sex, um, how the different ways they can have sex, that prostitution was okay, don't look at being a prostitute as being a negative thing. It was some of the most, they were saying that making prostitution legal and legitimizing it would decrease the amount of AIDS. It's so ridiculous what they're pushing on our people that it's hard to even, uh, it's hard to even articulate, but you're watching it. Uh, if you just tune in, make sure you tune in to um, elifemedia.net. Now here's something I have to play because I want people to see this assault on children coming from the multitude of different directions that it's coming from. It's not coming from just one direction and one angle. It's coming from many different directions. So what I'm about to show you now is a different type of direction that it's coming from. We have here this individual that many of you know him named Boyce Watkins. And the other one is named Cleo Monago. Now, many people don't know who Cleo Monago is. Cleo Monago is the would-be Baird Rustin of our time, except he doesn't have the charisma for people to get behind him. But, of course, he's on uh, a regular on Roland Martin's program. He is a homophile. Now, I'm going to show you something so you can see how, and, and the reason I'm showing this is because when we're talking about the curriculums coming after our children, I want you to hear this. Individuals like myself who want to protect our children from this, they will not give us access to the schools. We cannot get through to the schools. And if somebody does let us in the school, they have to worry about their job because we're going to teach the children that they need to be concentrated on math and English and not be sexualized and that the little black girl, one day you're going to grow up and marry a black man because we want to keep our race intact. And the little brother, hey, brother, you have to be able to take care of yourself, have your own business so you can you know, take care of your woman and, and know that you can take care of your family, your black woman, and they don't want that. This is the destruction of the race. Now, who are the homophiles promoting? Other homophiles. And not just that. You got guys like Boyce Watkins, and I'm not going to show the whole interview. I'm just going to show you the part that gets to right to what we're talking about. It is these individuals in our community who we follow behind, like the Boyce Watkins and like his uh, uh, information on economics, who then open up this stuff to us and make us think it's okay by inviting people like Cleo Monago. And I'm gonna, I can sit here and tell you what he's doing. I'm going to do it worse. Now remember, this is the same guy that's got upwards of $12 million from the Centers of Disease Control, essentially using that to promote homosexuality as part of African culture, using the red, black, and green, and Africa this, Africa that, going over to Africa uh, 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 and doing this stuff, and at the same time promoting homosexuality. That's his whole objective and agenda posing as being pro-black. Listen, but listen to this in the middle of this interview and see, I spliced in. He talks about working with children. Then I show you the video. I put the part in here, which you see, Boyce Watkins didn't show you this. He's just sitting there glorifying Cleo Monago for whatever his purposes are. Yeah, this is a great guy. We, in fact, when, you, when I start this right here where Boyce Watkins says, we're doing a film on black relationships. He's going to bring Cleo Monago, a homosexual, in to talk about repairing black people's relationships. Which means, since this guy's homosexual, obviously, he's talking about homosexual relationships being equal to uh, 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 heterosexual. But let me show you the evil that this guy's involved in. And Boyce Watkins is aware of who this guy is. And this is who Boyce Watkins is pushing on our people, which ultimately is pushing on our children. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. Wow. <laughs> Um, also, you should know that he's um, he's actually going to be in a film that we have coming out called The Black Love Blueprint. And uh, The Black Love Blueprint, uh, you can learn more about it if you go to theblackloveblueprint.com. It's all about black relationships, things like that. And I want to ask I mean, I have a project called Critical Thinking and Culture Affirmation, which is a behavior change methodology focused on black people to resolve these kinds of issues. And we have a project in Los Angeles called Watu Wajur, where we work with children and taught them how to decode white supremacy. And what turns you on? This is Cleo Monago. I'm turned on by 
uh, brothers who are uh, intelligent, who love themselves, where there's a where there's a um, spark between us, somebody in good shape, somebody healthy. Only brothers. Predominantly, it's my preference. When in bed, it's like they're like a, a man and then a woman. <laughs> well, people always ask that, but you you ask it more explicitly. It's just like the last question. <laughs> it was quite explicit to what turns me on. <laughs> Ain't your business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> High school but students. But no, I mean, you know, same gender loving means just that. That we're two men who love each other. We are with each other because we're attracted to men. Anybody else? It made me take a second look at guys in general. You know, all guys, not just black guys, everybody. Because you can think some guy is so big and masculine, oh, he would never have sex with another guy, and you could be very wrong. Whitelessness. So, this is the guy who's given access to black children, teaching them about homosexual, homophile sex, which in and of itself is pedophilic because no adult should be talking to children about sex except to if the children are saying they are things that they're interested in and you're trying to help them, and that's different. But to be teaching a child who's a heterosexual, matter of fact, to teach a child, period anything about homosexual sex while you involved in it is sick and perverted. But I want you to see the damage here. Boyce Watkins is giving him the rubber stamp. See, that's what I'm saying that the danger is. It's not just that they're doing it in the schools. They're going through the people that our people listen to and they're saying, hey, buddy, we want you to be on board with the, with the program while he eats his pizza and interviews this guy and glorifies a guy who's going to black children pushing the same agenda that you just saw going around in the curriculums around the country. So then the question is, if the black political people, if the people talking about black economic empowerment, if the schools are teaching it, if the uh, radio is teaching it, if the television is teaching it, who's countering it, telling our children that this is insanity and it's the wrong direction? Only the few of us. Now I want you to show you how sick this is because now, and I'm not going to show the whole interview, but just enough for you to get the point, now... He's flying around the world. This is him in Ghana, the same homophile, going to Ghana, talking to students and children, having access to our people on the continent, just like those other groups going with their pamphlets and curriculums trying to promote this homophilia. Now they got guys like him being funded by CDC, flying around the world in the name of sexual education and cultural awareness, pushing a culture that is not an African culture, not a black culture, on us of sexual degeneracy and destruction to young men. Man. And I've seen heterosexual men, or well, I shouldn't say I've seen heterosexual men, men who I don't know what they are, and they likely are heterosexual, who possibly, likely, in terms of um, percentages, but there's a lot of fe affection shown between men here that the United States ain't ready for. Black people, including, uh, why, where did that come from, or what is your perspective of that? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we have this thing going on. Um, and we do call our brothers or our friends, male friends, Charlie. So Charlie is like, what's up, bro? Like, Charlie? Is that S-H-O-L-L-I-E? No, C-H-A-L-E. That's what I mean, C-H. So Charlie, what's good? Yeah. Charlie? Yeah. Ah, ah, okay. There's this affection going on. It's, it's all about love. There's nothing strange. So, I mean, you actually saw me at the mall the last time. I just hugged my friend and we were just holding hands. Mm -hmm. We don't even have any mindset towards that. It's just that probably I've seen the person for a very long time. So now you see where um, they're pushing it on the continent. So now you're talking about black people all around the world getting the same message that's completely against what our basic cultural construct is. So what is happening to our youth? This is very recent. This was 2017, if I'm not mistaken what they call, and it's, it's all across the country now, Gender Bender Day at the high school. Um, the boys dress like, like girls, the girls dress like boys. This is all around the country, brother. This is just one school. I have videos from all around the country. Hey, they ride, they ride, they ride, they ride, they ride. in school. Mario. What's up, bro? 
I mean, Mariana. I'm talking about how we look. Mariana. Tyler Hello, Tyler Arena. Hey. 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 All the dykes out here. They freed the guys. Somebody asked why are the African leaders allowing us in their countries? A lot of it that they see they do fight, a lot of it they don't, but the truth of it is they do it for the same reason the so-called black leaders do, money. Uh, the ones that are allowing it, um, they even involved in it, or they get money or both, just like in this country. Because, I mean, they should, the African leaders would ask the same question. Why are the African leaders in America allowing it? Why are the African leaders in America calling an irritated genie the N-word because we're trying to fight child sexual abuse. Because they're involved in it and they're getting paid. Ain't that hard. The ones that are doing it. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm, I'm going to come to the phone lines. because, I, I, And I haven't gone to look to see if we have any phone. But I'm sure people are going to want to talk about this because this is just too much. Um, let me go and see if we got, yeah, we got uh, one call on the line, uh, so I want people to come in. Let me give everybody the phone number, 641-715-3640. Again, that's 641-715-3640. Give us a call. Uh, let's talk about this. What are we going to do? First of all, how do you feel seeing what you saw and hearing what you heard? And realizing that this is real. We got gender bender days all around. This has been going on. I, I did feminization in 2014. So this has been going on at least since 2010. This is not new. This might have been a lot longer than that. At least since 2010. But maybe about 2005. It's been going on for so long. But because we're, we're adults, we're not into youth culture. If you're not there, you don't know. And if you are there, you know, you don't even know who you can tell that's going to say anything about it. So it becomes... A situation where our lack of organization, our lack of moral standing, our lack of manhood and womanhood and organizational skill um, ha has created this uh, uh, void of capacity for us to really stand. Uh, here's the phone number, 641-715-3640. Again, 641-715-3640. Participation code, 948656-POUND. That's 948656-POUND. Let me go to... Uh, 5383, you're live on Chopping It Up. Hey, hey, uh, Jenny, this is Mr. X, I'm here. Brother Mr. X, come talk to me, man. We got some serious problems. W were you watching it, or were you just listening on Facebook, or both? Uh, I saw I saw that you dropped the, the European video, that 12-minute European video with the kids coming out with the penis. I saw that. And the other videos I just I just heard. Okay, okay. So come on, talk to us, brother. Talk to us. And just hold on one second. And well, uh, eighty six ninety one. I'm coming to you next. So just hang on. Go ahead. All right. The biggest thing uh, that you were talking about. Some of the things that I uh, that came to my mind when I heard those videos. And I heard when you first played that Boys Watkins joint. And some people felt that he really didn't know that the guy was going there or whatever have you. I'll, I'll comment on that later. But. Uh, the thing that I got from that is, like you said, uh, the lack of economic base and the fact that now the people that have the money are all involved in this homo file uh, behavior. And they always have been, but now it's become that, that pushing point where we're probably at 75 to 80 percent until it's 100 percent, you know, outright. We want everybody to practice homophilia uh, completely. And, you know, these people who have this money have influence, they have resources, they have power. And they have people who are fighting for them that are, you know, adults. And they push that story that says, hey, I have been like this since I remember. Or I was born like this, which is a complete other lie. Just like you said, you don't remember when you were coming out of the womb, whether you were gay or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just were a baby drooling on your parents. You know what I'm saying? So they have those people in the forefront pushing this information. And like you said, people like yourself, myself, I've had trouble trying to get to the boys and just have general discussion about what's going on out here. They block us from it, but they have individuals like the dude that you had displayed who push that information, but it gets pushed aside when he talks about uh, uh, the homophile behavior that he, he exhibits and talking about you know, what, he, what he feels is attractive to another black male and all that stuff. So I, I gather all that. Now look at boys and 
him talking about because I, I I've watched a few voices uh, 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 interviews and I've, I've listened to a few of his sound bites and stuff like that. One thing that stood out to me is that he, he, he never had time for marriage. He's too busy, and that's the, the crackers do that. You know, black men we in the forties and fifties we're dealing with somebody or a lot of somebody. You understand? Mm-hmm. We're not people that are are out and about and are not being seen with women or not having women around us if we're single at that age. You know what I'm saying? So I understand the busy part, but it's like, oh, oh okay, you've got to be dealing with somebody, but and plus, especially you well to do, it's, it's probably about that time. And then he brings on this gentleman that is involved in this stuff, and he says he doesn't know. So, uh, I, you know, Hold on, no, 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 you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying that he said he didn't know, or are you saying people trying to give him that excuse? Well, they, they, they were giving him that excuse as he brought him in, and when he, when he mentioned that, that he was gay, it kind of caught him aback. And someone mentioned in one of your comments that it looked like he didn't know. And then when you gave that after information about what him having done previous business with someone or someone working for him, you said someone was working for him, that was involved in that stuff and he had knew that no one's going to get in that organization him not know that you're into that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, they, they're kind of trying to use that excuse. It, it, it's, it's a, what you're tackling is something very, very scary. It's even scarier than outright white supremacy because, we're, again, we're infiltrated because the majority of our people have gay family members and they don't want to speak against them. You want, you, you, want, you want me to tell you what you're saying that, that rings to me so clear, and I'm glad you said that last part. Here's the interesting thing about that argument, I got gay family members. The interesting thing about that is we also have family members that steal, but you never mm-hmm. would see anybody, if anybody was going around with a sign saying, I believe in theft, I believe in robbery, we have a right to steal from other people. Our people wouldn't then start defending that group because they say they have rights. We wouldn't do that. Um, we, we have people that are alcoholics in our family. But if somebody goes around and starts saying, you know, alcoholism is nothing wrong with that. If a person wants to get drunk and be an alcoholic and lose their job, whatever the, the consequence, they have a right to do that. All of us would be like, you sound like a fool. You're advocating something that's damaging the people. The only thing that we know is damaging and unnatural and unhealthy to the black community that applies when we say we have family members like that, the only thing that applies to us supporting bad behavior is homophilia. Anything else that we have family members that's involved in it, if like, like crack. Man, my aunt was on crack. Yeah, that stuff is messed up. You don't want that stuff in your house. You don't start saying, oh, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, listen, don't you say nothing about a crack addict because my aunt's a crack addict. You don't say that. So what happens is, I realize, that's a scapegoat. It's a lie. The reason that we're supporting homophilia is not because we have people in our family. We have people in our family who do everything. We don't defend other stuff. We're doing it because the white folk done told us to. We are good, happy slaves now. In other words, we no longer resist white supremacy. We no longer have leaders that say no and followers who say no, we're going to fight back. Our leadership has been completely compromised. And our people have no fight left. So what they're going to do is whatever fight white folks give us. So they pull out some magical homo lotto, uh, Kaepernick, make the boy get on his knees. And I guess black males so suckerized and effeminized now, we like being on our knees. And now all of a sudden this magic mulatto, all of a sudden all of us on our knees, supporting some Negroes on their knees. And then men who are standing up to fight against something that's destroying our community, our community is not fighting. Why are our people getting on, our, on their knees? They're getting on their knees for one reason. White folk told them to. White folks have said Kaepernick is okay. Look at the media coverage we give them. Obama, the homophile, the homo lotto, goes out there and defends. We do whatever we're told to do now by whoever tells us to do it. We don't take positions of strength. And I'm just saying that to say... From now on, brothers and sisters, when y'all, when, when people, because I went for it for a long time, but now, no, it is not that we have people in our family that's involved in it, because we have people in our, in our family involved in everything that's bad. We don't defend none of that other stuff. We only defend what white folks told us to defend. Keep going, my brother. Absolutely, and I, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. And uh, a lot of times, like you said, uh, the white media will kind of 
uh, direct us in our thought process, and we kind of see if if we kind of look at it. It's kind of like being a child, and the child is doing something. He's testing. He's got the parent right there looking at him, and he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing. But he's, he's looking at the, he's gazing off the parent's reaction. The parent is cool, then he's going to do it. The parent's that's like, it. no, then he'll stop. That's and that's how we look at white privilege. That's how we look at the white privilege. That's how we look at white people. White people believe that we will allow. Okay, you can protest that particular way. Okay, cool. We'll go on it full bore with all our heart and desire and emotion with it. But if they say no, then we kind of back off of it. And, you know, even, even you know, dealing with the straight black pride movement and, and talking to you and the subject matter, people were a little nervous about putting that information out because it's something that's difficult to tackle because we don't know necessarily how to tackle that in which way the aggressiveness, which way uh, you do it. And it's, I'm like, it's pretty simple. Love your wife, love your black wife, love your black children, and smother them with it. If you can't say the things that Cheney says, then you, you, can, you can say you love your wife and you love your children. That's right. Your black wife and your black children. That's you, can right. do, you can do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I appreciate uh, more of that information. I'm bringing more and more people to you, brother. Uh, keep it up. Man, thank you for the consistency and the support. And uh, we want to get back on your program when we can. We want to tell more people about your program. Uh, hang on, brothers. I'm just going to let my brother in here so he can come in and hear what we're doing. And stay right with me. I'm going to come to my next call. Thank you, Mr. B. Uh, thank you, Brother X. All right. So now I'm going to come to my next caller, uh, 8691. You live on Chopping It Up with the Genie. How you doing? I'll praise that turn on glory to God. We long live the spirit of the most honorable Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Um, this is Baba Isaiah B. Brooklyn, New York. Um, I just got a quick message. Um, well, first, with the homosexual, I got a, a homosexual that's a family member or close to me argument. The best of the one, my go to thing is the crackhead argument. It's like, listen, we, you got, we all had a family member that was a crackhead. Or if you have somebody in your household that's a crackhead. Do you support that? No. No. Why? Because you know the lifestyle destructive, right? That's Listen right. to this. In terms of a crackhead, what is a crackhead exactly? You don't even know. You don't know how they think. You don't trust them around. They might steal. Mm. They're, they're compulsive liars. Mm. Like all of these type of different things that these 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 go with their addiction. It goes with the lifestyle of being a crackhead. Mm. So with a homosexual, it's like the crackhead lies and steals to get their fix. So it has to be things in a homosexual's mind that's different from the normal heterosexual, in this case, the sober person. The crackhead's mind is way different than a sober person. And, so, and so for the homosexual, uh, go ahead, bro. No, no, no. You go ahead. You, bro, you, you killing it. I just wanted to get to it because you, you made me think of something. But go ahead. I want you to, the, you, you, no, you, you, you on key. Yeah. So, so for the homosexual, they, they, you don't know as a heterosexual. You can't get into that mind. You don't know. You don't know if they would see, like examples I use for people. I'm like, just porno, for example. We kind of know porno is bad. A lot of us watch it. However, will you watch porno in front of your mother? No. no. Will you watch porno in front of your grandmother? No. No. Will you watch it in front of your child? No. But a homosexual, Ooh. you don't know how they feel. What if watching porn in front of a child is that, like to homos, that's just regular. I don't know. We don't know. Wow. We're not homos. We're not in that mind. Wow. Well, what if just being ass naked is just regular to them when they're home alone wow. and, and a child is there because wow. it's just a child? Brother? We don't, what if they watching gay porn? Like, we, I mean, man. Brother, <laughs> this is the best. Listen, let me tell you something. I've been doing this a long time. I like to claim to try to be the best uh, arguments. Brother, this is the best paradigm I've ever heard about that argument. What you, when you said that with crack, there are certain things that go along with it, and we all know that, and because we don't agree with the behavior, we don't ever defend it. Brother, I just you just made it crystal clear. Why do we not like homosexuality? Well, one, being a homosexual, you hit on males. Just it's just that simple. If you're a man 
It ain't two ways about it. That dude over there hits on males. You're a man. You're against that. So right then and there, you don't want that around you. It doesn't matter if he hits on you or not. The bottom line is that's what homosexuals do. What we know is that the right. boys that are getting molested are getting molested by males, mostly. There's a lot of women doing it now, but most of them are males. What does that mean? That means homosexuals will mess with children. And since we don't have no way to determine, just like you said, we don't know which crackhead will steal and which one won't, but we know that crackheads, they want crack, so they'll steal. Well, we know homosexuals want to have gay sex. How do we know which ones are going to mess with children and which ones ain't? There ain't no way to really know that. That's it, brother. You hit the nail on the head, bro. I, I don't even know if it could be hit any better than that. I, you hit it on the <laughs> proverbial head. Keep, you got anything mm, else, well, man? I, Drop it, man. You drop it. I, I ain't going to stop um, you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, brother, because I be, I, 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 I just, I'm a Haitianist. Like, I just live, breathe, sleep, race war. Like, that's all I, nobody likes me because I, I, I can't stop bringing up the race war wherever I'm at, whoever, whatever. So just to give you a quick example, I, I, I'm outside writing my book, A Sister Walked By. Um, I've seen an interracial couple. So I'm like, damn, interracial was on my mind. So when a sister walked by, I'm like, let me just ask her, what's her take on interracial real quick? So I'm like, sister, how you doing, beautiful black woman? Um, what's your take on interracial dating? What's your take on black men dating other females? I didn't even put in black women because that this is the psyche. I'm I'm trying to be a psychologist to get her to be more agreeable on my side, being against <laughs> interracial. I said, what is your take on black males running around with all these other races of females, pledging their allegiance to them? Ah, 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 ah. She says, oh, to each his own, you do what you do, boom, boom, all of this. Fast mm -hmm. forward, I end up lecturing her for like 15 minutes. I don't know mm -hmm. how she stayed into the lecture. <laughs> but I think I was winning the over. So at the end of the convo, I'm like, hold on, are you single? No. So I give it a side eye. I'm like, who, 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 what's your mate? Black man, white man, boom, boom, boom. I'm with a black man. I said, and you got the nerve to tell me you don't care about black men going outside the race? You about to go back home to a black man? Wow. What, what, like, what's good with our minds? Why can't, <laughs> like, whatever you are, whatever you do, whatever you identify with, like for me, I identify as a weed smoker. So I, I push for, you know, I, I push for that. I support that. <laughs> I, I, like, how are you a straight, black, and proud woman? You, you're in a relationship with a black man. You know the importance of it. You know how he's good to you and all of this. And you don't even got the goal. A stranger. It ain't like we on a job. I have no damn power. You can't even profess to me that you can't even say, well, I just feel, you know, the best option for the black man is a black woman. You can't even say that, sister. Mm. And, and I feel like that's one. That's our problem. The 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 closet heterosexual, the the silent majority, mm. gotta speak out. Gotta speak out. Everybody that's on this, if you know, listen. Straight black pride is the last thing we got. It's the last. It's the only thing we got. <laughs> only people talking about pedophilia, fighting this homosexual agenda, all of this. Farrakhan, everybody else bent over. Straight black pride is all we have. We got to promote it. We got to push it. Every new friend I get on Facebook, I'm inboxing them an irritated genie lecture. Watch this real quick. Let me know what you think about this real quick. Let's have a dialogue about this real quick. I'm texting it to people. I'm stopping people. I'm sharing and writing all this. You heard the Straight Black Power Movement? Boom, boom. We got to we gotta push them to your media, to the Straight Black Power Wall on the Horizon. We have to push them. That video with Brother Tad and I'm in Boston and we gotta push it. I'm reading the comments. Our people like, oh my God, where is the straight black pride movement? I, I need help. This is that. I thought I was alone. All of this. We gotta get that silent majority to let, see how sick this is. And let me do this. I think it's been fantastic, but I want to go to my next call. I got another call here. Nah, definitely, definitely. That's 39, 36. I'm coming to you right now. Let me just say, brother, first, Thank you for the fight that you've been engaged in. You've been consistent and you've been out there. We see you, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for calling and com your comments. I don't even know if it's possible to make a richer comment on what we're talking about today than what you have. But also, you gave me an idea. I was going to end the program with a video 
Uh, and I may still do that, but before we get off, I'm hoping I have the time. I'm going to play that Straight Black Pride video with Brother Tad, who was out there uh, in the street with those people and, and basically was uh, able to show people, hey, this is not what we need to be about. We're a Straight Black Pride family. When the homophiles came to our launching of the Straight Black Pride movement in Boston and tried to create confusion, uh, our sister Melody, and you know, sister Melody can fight, but sister Melody was cool. She was out there with her children, and she, she refrained from punching somebody in the face. Sister Keisha gave him the business, and Brother Tad just, 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 just knocked him down. Yes, sir? All, All right, right, brother. Straight Black Pride, brother. Straight Black Pride. I really appreciate that call. That was a power call, right? That's what I call a power call. Uh, don't let me forget, brothers and sisters, I'm going to try to end it with that Straight Black Pride uh, movement uh, lecture by Tad. It went viral, 150,000 views on Facebook. Uh, and, and it's getting many more people around the world are looking at it saying we want some of this in our life and we're going to make it happen. 3936, you live on Chopping It Up. Hi, uh, Eric and Gina. I just want to start off to say I just love watching you speak. I love anything you post, I'm always watching it. I actually watch the whole, uh, you know, live stream in its entirety. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's interesting because I think that white you know obviously white people they they kind of fail to surprise me so when you talk about them pushing this gay agenda on their children i'm like okay i think it's, first of all i think it's wrong i don't think you should push any gay agenda on any children but if they want to push that on their own children it's like you guys are not i mean that's what you guys do right they always do things that are outside of natural order and, and normalcy anyway so you know it is what it is but the video that you know showed what was happening to that after Afri um, African centered school, it kind of really hit home because it's like now they're pushing it on our children. Do you know what I mean? And I think black people we really need to speak out. Not only black men in, in particular, right? Because I think there is power when a, when a black man speaks on behalf of the community, but, but black women too. A lot of the times, black women, I think we we do kind of. Um, we support the gay agenda subconsciously. You know, a lot of us, we have homosexual friends and we think it's fun and we think they're funny. And we think it's cool to walk around with them and they're, you know, they're snapping their neck on Instagram and, and, and recording videos that mimic our imagery, black women's imagery. We, we laugh at it, right? So we are silently condoning this, uh, the, the, the perpetuation of homosexuality in our community and, and we need to stop that. Um, another point I want to t touch on is that, so I go to law school actually, um, a pretty good law school, and it's, it's funny because I had spoken to two of my professors on two different topics. One professor I spoke on, Kinsey Report, which you know you showed a little bit about that, Kinsey, who had, uh, he, people who didn't see it, and he pretty much recorded having sex with a four-month-year-old, how many recorded how many orgasms they had, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a very sick man, right? He's actually one of the leading fathers for why we have such strict laws against pedophilia in this country today. So I told her about it. I showed her the, this Kinsey documentary, and she told me that I was being um, anti-sex and, and like, you, you know, and people, children should, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a debate whether children can consent to sex or not. Like, are, are, are they too young to have sex or not? And honestly, I just stopped. I didn't even say anything else because at that point I already know I can't get through to you. And speaking to white people too, there's only so much I can go back and forth is because like we already have two different streams of thinking and processing information anyway. So I'm not even gonna, you know, go down that path with you. But my other professor, she's a black woman, um, I was talking to her about uh, black men. So I don't know if you know, but there's a rise of a lot of black men who are or black women who are dating men who have had like their, you know, their penis sucked by another man or had had sex with other men. And a lot of black women are, you know, like, you know, I talked to a man if he if he has engaged in sex with another man and insecure, you know, the, the big TV show everyone talks about actually touched on that topic. And a lot of women are becoming more and more normal with it. And I was telling her about, you know, this leading scholar, right? Not only my school, like in America really said how she thinks it's okay for black men to be sexually fluid because they are pushing back on the notion of toxic black masculinity. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I was a little taken aback because I was just like, I was surprised she actually said that. 
And then I was also surprised because I'm like, am I kind of like, you're telling me that's the only way to reconstruct and tackle toxic black masculinity, which does need, you know, it, it, it does need some work. Let's let's be all, let's be honest, let's be real. But you're telling me the only way to do that, or one of the leading ways to do that, is for black men to go out and have a penis put in his butt, or for a black man to go like, you know, and I, I I I hate to be so vulgar, but you know, it, it, I mean, the schools are taking it there. Right. So it, it, it was just really it was really interesting. It is really perplexing that this this is leading scholars. This is, you know, this is the people who are teaching the young minds that are then are going to go out and because not everyone's going to become lawyers. Right. In my law school, some people are going to go out and teach kids, teach the, the third graders, the fourth graders, the fifth graders and, and perpetuate these these notions of sexual fluidity within our community. And I, I think it's, it's just wrong. It's just, let, let, it's just let, inherently wrong. Let, let me ask you, how old are you, young lady? I'm I'm 27. Okay, you're 27. I'm gonna tell you why I really appreciate this call, because Thank you. I'm I'm 43, about to be 44, and sometimes you know, and I've been doing this for a long time. So what happens is we get removed from youth culture, but I stay close enough mm-hmm. in touch with it because we're doing this work. And this is the difference between you and what I see in a lot of our young people. Most of our young people have fallen for this thing, lock, stock, and barrel. They can't maneuver out of it. And what I'm hearing you say, you have not. There's one thing I would want you to consider, though. When you say black masculinity does need some work or or toxic masculinity, I I just want you to be careful because I want this is just another aspect because you Mm -hmm. you got the basic stuff down. I want you to think about this. This is what they do. They create words that have that, that don't make sense. And then once we use the word, we give legitimacy to the idea, even if we don't agree with it. So, for instance, there's nothing. Okay, black masculinity, by definition, isn't toxic. Black masculinity Mm -hmm. describes black men being men and manly. What's toxic is when black men are not masculine. Masculine Mm -hmm. means protecting your family, taking care and having responsibility. These are masculine, manly characteristics. So what the homophiles do is, the, really the feminists, the lesbians, the homophiles, in order to make black manhood and manhood in general bad, they attach black masculinity with the word toxic. No, when you want to talk about black men's behavior being inappropriate, what you do is you use another description and then black masculinity becomes something positive. And then anything else that you call is the opposite of that. So when we say the effeminization of the black male, that's the issue because we're being effeminate. We're not standing up. We're, 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 we're more ego than we are productive. That's how we got to look at it. Don't let them pull you into the... We, we know that there are problems with black men and, and no question about that. What I'm saying is we don't want to use a word on any level that associates black masculinity with being toxic on any level because what that means is then maybe the black male should be effeminate. And that's the psychology of what they're doing. They're, 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 they're using mm-hmm. words. They're creating new terms. We need to stick to the terms we grew up with. We need to stick to what we know because that's what's normal. Manhood is appropriate. We need to be more responsible men. What we can't do is pretend like black manhood is, 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 is correct and that we're doing the right stuff today. But what we also can't do is start using their lexicon and language system because it's designed to create confusion. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. I do, I do. And I, I think that was a, yeah. And thank you for clarifying. You know, you're right. I, I do agree. Um, and, it's, yeah, they, I do believe they, they play around with words to confuse you and to, to get you to align your ideologies with theirs. Um, that's true. Uh, can I ask you, a, I do have a question, though. Do you think that, because um, I was watching this documentary on, I think it was like homosexuals in Mississippi or something on YouTube, and it was a, a man, a black man, he was speaking, he was on the DL, he was hidden, you couldn't see his face, and he was talking about how there was so much pressure to be, I, and I'm paraphrasing, so much pressure to be hyper-masculinized, and so much pressure for him to go out, get a job, provide for his family, and, and, and be a man, that he thought it was better for him to just kind of almost assume a role, a very feminine role, right? And so that that reverse, almost, I, I wouldn't say reverse psychology, that notion of if I can't live up to these high standards of what it means to be a black man in society, I'm better off being feminine. What do you, what do you think about that notion? 
I, I'll say it's it's part of what the, uh, uh, Brother Neely Fuller and Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said back in the 70s that they were going to make black manhood such a difficult thing to do that uh, mm -hmm. instead of us wanting to fight white supremacy, the alternative they were going to have is, you know, basically the whites are going to be the man. So we have a choice. We want to be the boy or the female. And so I think that there is there is a place where black manhood becomes very difficult and we want to give up. But if I was going to say mm -hmm. what the real thing leading to homosexuality is, the primary thing would be sexual abuse. Sexual abuse is mm -hmm. the single primary thing leading to homophilia in our community, even though things like what you just talked about are very real and do contribute. Um, I will also say, even in what you just said, See, it's very clever how they're wording this. If he had pressure to be a man, which is to take care of a woman, have a job, and take care of your family, that's the pressure you're supposed to have as a man. Like, that's called mm -hmm. manhood. So that's not, when you said hyper, you know, masculine, that's not hyper masculine. Well, no, she said hyper this time. You know, he, this hyper masculinity or talk, you know, whatever. Um, that's actually just basic manhood. So it, it, what that is is redefining manhood. If, if, if it's too much pressure for a male to think that he's supposed to be a man, then what that's saying is that not that it's toxic manhood, but that manhood in general is toxic. <laughs> and manhood is not a good thing, no. And, and see, and, and I wanna, I'm so glad you did. Let, let me first thank you for having taken the time for this because the women need to hear this as much as the men need to hear it, but particularly the women. What you just said is the perfect way for me to segue into what they're doing with our sisters. When I, in the best way I can say it, I, I, I was watching a video on Facebook, and it was a little 10-year-old boy. I, I'm going to say 10. He might have been 8. But he was fixing a tire, and his daddy was standing right there. He said, come on, boy, let's do it. And he, he's struggling with this thing, man, and I'm sitting there smiling going, man, this young brother going to be solid. And I never forget. It, it really yeah. it, it turned my soul. I started looking at the, 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 the comments and the sisters. I mean, it was a bunch of them. This is child abuse. Mm -hmm. This is child, now the father's standing right there with his son. This is a little 10 year old who will never not know how to change a tire. He'll, when, a, when he meets a woman, she'll like, I got a man, my tire went out, he fixed it, he fixed my toilet. This is gonna be a man that has some skills and can do something. But the women see the process of manhood as being toxic. It's not toxic masculinity. It's that this man is doing what you do to a young boy to turn him into a man. He's there with him, so it's not like he left him in the middle of a highway. Ain't no cars coming. He's in a park place, and it's safe. But she believes manhood to be toxic. So they actually had one sister, and this one I just had to comment. She said, if I knew who this man was, I would call CPS and have his son taken from him because this is child abuse. Oh, wow. The, 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 I, I, I want you to start, and you in law school, so you know how to make a good argument to do this. Start arguing with people that we should never use the term toxic and the word masculinity at the same time. You can say toxic homosexuality or toxic effeminization of black men. Only use the word toxic when you're talking about something other than strong black manhood. When we talk about strong black manhood, it is the very thing we need to put our community back in its proper place. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Yeah, it does. It does. I Thank appreciate you so much. You, I sis. appreciate you. Keep doing what you do. Thank you. You too. Bye. 27 right. year old strong sister got her mind on right fighting this battle the way it's supposed to be fought. This is serious business, brothers and sisters. Um, again, uh, and, and once we finish here, uh, by tomorrow, we're going to put this program up because this program is neat. I'm going to put it on the Facebook page, Irritated Genie Speaks. And I'm going to put it up on Irritated Genie as well on YouTube. So on the YouTube page, Irritated Genie Speaks. And on YouTube, it'll be up there. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have this one that you're watching right now on Facebook Live. It'll still be there, but you won't see the videos. You'll see the actual videos. Ooh. I got to get a copy of it. Uh, yeah, I'll get a copy of it, and, and we'll put the uh, actual video up on YouTube so that you can see it and watch it for yourself because this is the kind of programming our people need. So with that said, brothers and sisters, I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, and I'm going to end it like we said we were going to end it. I don't have any more phone calls. I'm going to end it with um, the brother, uh, Brother Tad, from uh, 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 the Boston uh, uh, opening of the Straight Black Pride movement, 
Uh, we launched the Straight Black Pride Movement by the Sali Rowe, uh, Sister Mello, uh, and we had the homo files, the, the Gay Lives Matters, came out to the event to be disruptive. And of course, they put out nasty articles talking negatively about us. But I want you to see it for yourself so that you can actually watch it and see for yourself how the appropriate way for us to stand up and represent what straight black pride means. Notice, you heard no profanity. You heard no unnecessary, outlandish, loud, argumentative talking. You heard firm, strong womanhood and manhood and people who would not move off their square in our position. But at any rate, you saw a family who stood together strong and would not back down and did not let them take us off our path. And it was very clear when you listened to them that they knew whose house they was in and they knew that they better act uh, in accordance with our law or there would be uh, uh, some form of, of, of correcting of the behavior. Uh, you don't come in no straight black pride house and think you ain't going to be straight and respectful. It doesn't work that way. We put black uh, gay lives matter out before, we'll put them out again. We do not play that. But at the same time, we don't come for conflict. We come for black family. And we believe it's our job as men to protect our family. And Unfortunately for the bad folks out there, the, 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 the lesbos and the feminists that want to come out and cause confusion, the sisters we have, uh, they respect us. The only reason that they've been as kind-hearted as they have been, but the sisters we got, they warriors too. So I don't suggest uh, Straight Black Pride is the place you want to come out and give your opinion. Stay at home and be sick if that's what you want to do. But black family, whenever we have a Straight Black Pride movement events, we want you to come out and enjoy them because you will enjoy them. And we're going to end the program today with our brother, Really, it's the whole Straight Black Pride family, but this particular clip highlighted Brother Tag coming in here and knocking it out the park. So we're going to go ahead and play this clip and end the program. Thank you for tuning in. Once we get it up, it uh, should be by tomorrow, up on YouTube. Spread the word to people. And I also load it up to Facebook. Uh, now you're going to do 45 minutes. So I, I may even break it up and put it up on Facebook as well, in part, so people can see the assault that's going on with our people. So I'm going to go ahead and play this now. Tune in. Thank you. And I appreciate you for supporting Chopping It Up.
what is the threat of a black man loving a black woman to produce black children? How is that a threat? But see, what it is, a lot of people who think they're intelligent really don't understand the history between Africans and European people. And then we take it a step further because a lot of black people don't even identify with being African. So here's where the, here's where the conflict comes in. We have to ask, if you're part of a black organization, who does it allow? What are the ideologies? What is the mission statement? What is the end goal? Are you for integration or separation? And these are the things that, that make it as plain as day. It's either A or B because there is no... Well, I was just assuming that as AB of independent black people, that was really that we're trying to separate ourselves from the machine, from the ideology, from the systematic things that disenfranchise our people. Right. So independent and black, right? We're independent and black. We don't rely on them. We tell our own stories. That's our point. So that's what I'm just trying to say. No, I agree with that because okay. we, we all out here have a media company. Which is funny, and this is why we say here's where the contradiction comes in, because some black independent people aren't straight, nor are they proud to be straight. So when they come in, they always have their slant. They throw in words like hetero, with a heteronormative. They say cisgender, uh, uh, homo homophobia, because I actually like, because I like black women. I have black daughters. So I think black women should always be protected. But when we talk about black men taking true stances, strong stances, that becomes a threat to the system. But many people don't understand all they are chocolate covered Europeans. The language sounds good. I, I realize people got this language down packed. They make up words, use big words. They learned in these fancy colleges. But the fact of the matter is that they're not authentic in their position in terms of what it is to get free from under this yoke of white supremacy. We keep talking about we're fighting police brutality, we're fighting sexual discrimination. Sexual discrimination hasn't really been black people fight because since we've been brought here, since we've been stolen and brought here, black women have always been working. From the slave ships to the white man's kitchen, yeah, when no, white I women can't work, black women were working. When black men couldn't work, white women were working. But we have to stop adopting European women's conversation. That's, 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 that's their language. That's what black people, we meet people along the way. Some of our parents weren't as revolutionary as we would like to think. So they start planting seeds of Negroism in our mind. For lack of better. Can I use, is that a word, Negro? Is like a word. Like me. Yeah. And, and then we just think that resistant, oh, stick it to the man, and F the police. We think that's liberation struggle. We think that's fight. It is so much more. One of the first things we have to do is replenish the planet with our people because we're dying by the millions. We're dying, and it just didn't start with Mike Brown or Trayvon Martin or Emmett Till. Mm -hmm. It didn't start with the first African brought on a good ship, Jesus. This thing has been going on longer than you or I can even imagine or fathom. But once we start being clear that we have to start loving our people more than we hate our enemies, trust me, That's hate key. our enemies. That's key. But we love our people more. But how much can we love our people if I don't find love in a black woman? How much love do I have for my people if I'm not going to sleep with a woman at all to produce more black people that I say I love so much? We don't see the contradiction and the flaw in our, in our ideology because the rhetoric sounds so good. We ain't never heard it before. The reason why we never heard it before because it never works in the stupid. But I'm gonna step off my soapbox. I'm sorry, I just get passionate about it. Because I'm a straight black man. I am so proud to be a father. I am so proud that my parents are proud of me. I am so proud that my grandparents are proud of me. And my children always say, that's my dad. They love saying that. I come to their school, dad, my friend said, you cool. I like that, but I'm older. <laughs> and the kids still find me cool. But you know why? I give them authentic truth. I don't give them ideology or idealism that's not practical and applicable to day-to-day -day survival, because that's what our children need. They need to get out of this utopia of everybody's going to get along, because that's not the truth. Lions and high eagles both live in the jungle, don't they? But they fight every chance they get. They fight because they know that we're fighting for resources. Black people no longer fighting for resources. Then we wonder why we're economically depressed in our community. But I'm a little bit older than some people out here. I can remember when there were all black stores. I'm talking about the corner store, the, 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 the stick, everything was owned by us. So we always talk about we want to stop crime in our community, but we don't create economic opportunities for our young people. But when you look at what they're locked up for, drug dealing, 
rob and steal and crimes of resources. But then we have to peel back the lens and take it back a little further. Who stole the resources from us in the first place? When we the first one the plant that come from the land of plenty. We keep getting caught up in this trick bag that these people keep setting up for us because the sexual revolution has never been our problem. We've never been a problem with being attracted to black women. If God made anything better than the black woman, he kept show it for me, himself. Show me where that is. So when we talk about, and I heard y'all ask a brother a question about uh, some dude who beat up on his sister, we don't consider that a straight man. That's right. That's Even right. if he's never been involved with another man That's sexually. Right. If you find strength in beating on weaker people, harming children, harming women, harming elderly, you are not a straight man. That's right. And any straight man, any strong heterosexual man can That's tell right. you that. Yes, That's right. right. Any strong heterosexual man will tell you that. He's black, man. So we got to stop misidentifying people. Right. Talking about, yeah, this man, he's not a man. You harm a child, you are not a man. You harm a female, you are not a man. But I'm going to tell you something about straight black pride that I do know. You want anybody on here? This brother, this brother, this brother, this brother. We have no problem with working through God's will. God works through the hands of men. You want righteous justice? Let somebody harm these children. I ain't that conscious. We, yeah, we, you out. yeah. We I'm have no problem with right. working hands on people. Because when you talk about strength and power, the ultimate force on this planet, the ultimate force is violence. It's violence. When you can't get no justice, that is the ultimate justice. And I'm going to leave it there. I, I apologize. No, Sorry, y'all no, didn't hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, but wait, wait, here's, here's, here's the thing to the series. To the sister statement though, when we talk about oh. black media, like I said, what we've been written about, all the negative press have come from black media and their promotion of a homosexual agenda. That's and the right. one thing we always ask people, what positive, productive thing has come out of a homosexual relationship with black people? How does that help us? And nobody has answered that question yet. That's people right. want to name people who were famous in the movement that has harmed the movement because people always bring up Bayard Rustin, but nobody talks about Bayard Rustin being arrested for having sex with underage children. Right. Nobody talk about him about marrying, what's that dude named, Walter Nagel? Yes. Who he adopted as his son and then had him as his lover. Adopted him as his son just to raise him and marry him. He groomed him. He groomed him to be his sex slave. But we don't study European history. We don't understand it because we're talking about centuries. We're talking about millennia of in, indecency and degeneracy. So, so here it is. We, we black folks here in America just think our history started with slavery. And even then, we get a whitewashed version of it. Oh, there were some white people that were mean, but then some white folks. Straight pride. All right, brothers and sisters. So I know I said that was it, but we're going to go ahead and end the program now. And I'm going to end it with... 10,000 pound gorilla, my alpha uh, uh, southpaw, and you'll understand when we play it why we ending it with this one. Because this is what it's all about. We say the homo fault, the homo files are coming. So, thank you for tuning in, brothers and sisters. We'll see you at 6 p.m., 6.15 sharp. We're going to start with perception in the third hour. We're going to talk about it tonight. One, two, one, two, one, two. My alpha, the great disaster. Don't get confused about my way of life. It's not gangster, it's militant, ill intent. I mastermind and leave a federal building bent. Build a tent and live in the wilderness. Shop in a tree branch, in a river, spearing fish. I'm fearless. Every now and then you might find a video of me through my media pipeline. It's wartime. Check one, two. The irritated genie. The one who is cracked. The one who is the house. So we call him the cracker because he cracked the foundation of black men and the black woman. It's a war the horizon. One thing has been consistent with our people. Let's go, Paul. They say Zeus descended as an ego and kidnapped this young boy named Ganymede. He forced this young boy to be his lover. How sick is that? The Greek god known as Zeus was a twisted kid. They say he had many faces and wore many hats. The lascivious behavior of the elite Greek male was mirrored in the antics of his gods. The all-powerful Zeus was a philandering husband whose sexual appetites ran the gamut from goddesses to mortal women to young boys. 
homosexuality accepted by blacks. But when I backtrack, I see no history of European trickery. We weren't involved in such white sex acts. You disagree, the burden's on you to prove it existed. In Africa, amongst the original Egyptians, show me bestiality and Kemet. Show me pyramids where homosexuality was represented. The image imprinted. You can't cause it ain't called your home for fighting this 10,000 pound gorilla. Caesar was every man's wife and every woman's husband. Columbus raped Indian boys by the dozen. The middle passes, blacks yelling and suffering across the Atlantic. Chained down in pain, somehow they survived. Although he feminized by the white bandits. Death and disease left some slaves stranded. Floating in the ocean where their bodies were examined. By the shock and in the dock they would follow. Waiting for a taste of this human cargo. Those shocks didn't swallow were put on sex farms. Made it and forced to use white sex norms. Incest, sex with your cousin and your sister. How could you forget all that they done to us? Baldwin and William Styron were interracial homosexual lovers that decided to architect and construct a new version of Nat Turner's life that will marginalize them. Damn, James, how you do that? Team up with a cracker to downplay what Nat did with an axe to the master. You knew when Nat Turner meant the blacks. I read your poems, you had your hands on the pulse of the people, it seems. Did Nat Turner represent the dangerous role before Martin King? Maybe you should review the roots. A literary genius, why'd you let this William come between us? That turnal isn't he'll always be seen as the meanest slave ever to crack a beat head up. Association Team that were gays and fought for rights They all sick, one and the same They think it's okay to screw boys It's wrong uh, that we have laws in America That criminalize sexual behavior Things like the age of consent law And uh, sodomy repeal And we're going to see that those laws will fall Ain't they gone the same Jump shot, dribble, bounce pass It's all the same game, blow the whistle They foul facts, more than a little And why are we practicing their sex rituals? Some say I'm spewing hate. I say they used African made pieces as alligator bait. Let me never date up to 2008, 2009, 2010. They're selling black kids to homosexual men and lesbos too, man. We gotta step in. Fighting this 10,000 pound gorilla in a song.